Christine Holgate, thanks so much for talking to us tonight. Could you explain to us why you thought it was so important to give that evidence to the Senate inquiry today? Well, Laura, in a sense, the Senate inquiry gave me a platform and I felt it was critically important that we speak out for all people who have been bullied. I want what happened to me to never happen again. People have the right to go to work and the right to come home safe. So let's go through what happened to you and what the story was here. Um, starting with what the deal was that uh, led to the Cartier watches being given to those executives. The truth of the matter was it was all about a service called Bank at Post and it was being threatened with closure. Now, if we lost that service, that would have meant 55% of all communities in Australia would have no access to any financial services because the banks had already left. And it basically uh, involved about 3,000 uh, small franchisees, if you like, facing the possibility of closure. For the communities of Australia, particularly for rural and regional Australia, it saved a very, very important service. So you told the Senate today that you could have given those four executives who landed the deal a bonus of $150,000 each, but you chose instead to give them watches. Why was that? Well, I wanted to give them something which was special. It was a moment in time. And one of the team had worked at Deutsche Post and he shared about how they'd always given watches. And I, you know, I agreed with them. I, th I thought it was an appropriate recognition. And uh, I was immensely proud of those four people. So we've heard a lot about the Boston Consulting Group report uh, in today's Senate hearing. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what that report was about um, and maybe reflect on how, how you described it to the Senate today? So the, re the Boston Consulting Group was employed when the current chair was appointed and that was in November 2019. And it was a report I, I didn't agree with um, there's parts of it I did agree with, but the majority of the findings I did not agree with, and I believe that if that, if those findings had ever been rolled out, thousands and thousands of jobs would have gone, services would have been cut. Uh, were there any other episodes like that where you, where you did feel that there was a direct sort of influence from the government about how uh, the, the company should be running its operations or what you should be saying publicly? Well, I think, you know, there definitely was. The fact that the BCG report is a secret review, in my opinion, is not healthy. We shouldn't have secret reviews. This is the country's business, country's asset. It's our national treasure. What needs to be so secret? But when things are made secret and you're told that they have to be, that puts an inordinate amount of pressure onto people. So let's throw forward to October 22 uh, last year in the Senate estimates hearing when you started to be asked about the Cartier watches. Up until this time, had there been any suggestion that the, this was a controversial thing that you had done? Absolutely not. It was celebrated. This is a very significant investment, the largest investment from an outside company into Australia Post. If anyone's in any doubt about how important this was, go into their local community post office and ask the owner. Well, let's go through what happened then. Uh, you finished giving evidence at 10 to 1 after several hours of fairly torrid questioning. Um, I thought we might just watch the Prime Minister in question time about an hour later uh, and, uh, and just see what your reaction to that is now. If the Chief Executive wishes to stand aside, well, not wishes to stand aside, she's been instructed to stand aside, and if she doesn't wish to do that, Mr Speaker, Speaker she can go. You said today uh, in the Senate that you didn't watch that for some weeks on medical advice, uh, but you would have been told about it on the day. What, what did you think when you heard about that? I think it's one of the worst acts of bullying I've ever witnessed. And even now I have to take myself out of myself to watch it. It is an utter disgrace. Nobody at any point said, hold on a moment. This was two years ago, not in a pandemic. 
This was for actually getting a life-saving investment that many could have argued the government should have been giving to us to save those post offices. You know, Laura, I don't, you know, I didn't just run Australia Post. I co-chair the trade board for the country, and I still do that today. I think you would have rather hoped that before somebody publicly hung you and humiliated you, that they may pick up the phone and call you and ask you directly what happened and why. But there's no mention of that because they didn't, only the chair did. So take, take us through the next few hours. Um, you drove back to Sydney from That's Canberra. Uh, there were a lot of phone calls made, um, but as you say, nobody rang up to ask you about this. When the chair did speak to you, did, what, what, what did he have to say to you? He didn't speak to me directly on the way back. So he never said to you, um, by the way, you're going to have to stand aside or stand down? He never actually said that to you? He told me that before the Prime Minister spoke in Parliament. And I told him very clearly, I didn't think that was the right thing to do. It wasn't the right thing to do on many levels. We are a very large organisation going into peak. You can't leave an organisation rudderless as you're going into your most busiest period. And I personally think it's very difficult when a leader is stood down to ever really return. I didn't want to, and I think it's evident by the Prime Minister's remarks that he knew I didn't want to. But it was clear to you that uh, the instruction that you stand down was as a result of an instruction from the uh, Minister and presumably therefore the Prime Minister. Several days later, I got a letter from the chair and it effectively said that. They were instructed to stand me down and I'd agreed to, but I hadn't agreed to. So we went back and said, I haven't agreed to. When did I agree to? We got no response. So we wrote again. We got no response. So my lawyer put out a media statement and then we got a response and it said, Christine agreed with me. It is not plausible. I never agreed to do it. I asked constantly for details of when I did. I even again went back to them after their letter and said, tell me when, exactly when this phone call took place. Their response was, we will have to talk to our lawyers. So tell us about the Maddox report. What was that? Well, I think you've just let me listen to what the Prime Minister said the Maddox report was supposed to be about. But of course it wasn't. The Maddox report was just an interrogation into me. So what were the findings of the Maddox review and when did you find out what, the, what they were? The feedback was there was a finding of no deliberate dishonesty, fraud or any wrongdoing. So apart from your personal treatment, your evidence reflects really disturbing governance issues here, I think, about what's supposed to be an independent statutory body. Uh, I just wonder w whether you've been shocked by both those governance issues in terms of Australia Post, but also in terms of its relationship with government. I think it's incredibly disappointing. In my evidence today at the summit, um, Senate, I think you will see, even if you put the issues with myself to one side, and you just take a very simple issue, which is this secret government review on the future of Australia Post, well, the chair of the board is now referenced multiple times of claiming he'd only seen a draft. You've also been quite blunt today about the fact that you believe your treatment was partly a gender issue, um, but it does go to those broader issues of bullying I mean, we've had this extraordinary period in Canberra uh, with a lot of talk about sexual harassment, but bullying is at the heart of uh, a lot of these controversies. Well, if you were to look in my inbox on Saturday morning, I woke up to over 4,500 um, new messages on Saturday, and many of them were for people from all walks of life telling me their stories of bullying and harassment. But my own observation is it probably happens more in this Canberra bubble than it does outside. It seems to be a special place with its own rules, but they're not good rules and they need to be changed. 
and there needs to be real authenticity in that desire to change them. I don't know another chairman in this country who would have treated their CEO and leadership team how I've been treated. I think it's absolutely appalling. I should just go through the uh, issues that, um, that the chair put in response to your initial submission, just to make sure we've covered off on those. Um, uh, just uh, for the record, uh, he said, first of all, that um, uh, support provided to you, the board ensured Ms Holgate was provided with extensive and ongoing support from our senior HR executive. It is insulting to read that statement. To read, we didn't want her to resign. We provided her with support. Hello, you refuse. There was a cartoon of me depicted as a prostitute. And when I was asked them to actually defend me and to address some of this, they refused. How could anybody possibly, how can any parent watching your program want their child to go through that? Any husband want their wife to go through it? Any son or daughter want their mother to go through it? That is disgraceful behavior. And they did nothing to defend my reputation. I can't see one act where that chairman genuinely tried to help and support me. Sue Davis is an outstanding executive. She did it in her capacity as a person. Yes, I did have EAP. They were aware through EAP just the depth of my mental health. I was suicidal. They knew that. Yet they carried on allowing the discrediting of me to continue. So what happens to Christine Holgate now? Well, I've, I've had a, a bit of a shocking five months. But you know what? I've learned a lot. And I've heard a lot of stories. And uh, I hope that going forward, I'll be a stronger leader for this. I'll be a more compassionate leader. Because I know what it feels like to be the person on your own facing a massive organization. But I'm, you know, I'm happy about the future. I really believe in our country. I believe in the importance of e-commerce. I believe in the importance of growth. I don't mind taking on a hard challenge. So I'm ready to jump back in again. And what happens with trying to settle with Australia Post? Because it isn't settled. It certainly is not settled. So um, maybe if the Prime Minister's watching, he could give me a call and I'd love an apology, but he could help me resolve my contract. What I do going forward, I will contemplate now that we've closed the door of my submission with the inquiry. And that could presumably include legal action against Australia Post and others? Possibly. You haven't made a decision yet? Not yet. Yeah. Might be going to let the dust settle a bit from the, the, this, this current period? I've, I've made a commitment to the senators today that um, if they need, I will go back to the Senate and help them with the inquiry. I didn't need to put a submission in. Laura, you are the first person, the first journalist I've met in five months. I didn't need to turn up today. I didn't need to sit and contemplate what those men did to me. And I did it because I want to stop to workplace bullying. I want to stop to this ridiculous intimidation. They harassed me and they thought they'd got away with it. And if it wasn't for Angela Cramp and all her community post offices, who no matter when I said go away, they carried on campaigning. And for the unions, by the way, who supported her, I don't think we'd have this inquiry. So I felt it was only right that I stood up. What kind of leader would I be if I would tolerate bullying because that would mean it, they were entitled to do it to others. Christine Holgate, thanks so much for talking to us today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.